Bienvenue everyone, this is Streaky Geek and you are watching Desert Island 7. Imagine the situation, you're going to live on a desert island with an infinite electrical power supply but no internet capability. When packing for your trip you will only have room to take 7 games with you. Which ones would you choose? Will I include the definitive best games of all time? Of course not, they're my favourites. Having different opinions keeps the world interesting, so please put your lists and suggestions for any great games you think I may have missed in the comments below. Today we'll be looking at games developed by Namco. The company was founded by Masaya Nakamura in Tokyo in 1955. In 1977, Nakamura Trading Corporation abbreviated their name to Namco, and throughout the 1980s and 90s they developed a number of classic games such as Pac-Man, Galaga, Dig Dug, Pole Position, and later Ridge Racer, Tekken, Time Crisis, and Soul Calibur. If I could only take seven games developed by Namco to a desert island, these are the ones I would choose. I'm going to be stuck on this desert island for a long time, so I need something to cheer me up when the isolation kicks in. And Clonwa is the cat for the job. He first started out on the original PlayStation and has become something of a cult classic. While I do enjoy that game and the 2.5D graphics were great for their time, they can look pretty jagged on modern HD TVs. The version shown here is the Wii remake that improves the graphics but dubbed the original Japanese style cutesy voices with a more 90 sounding American rad dude. He even had two really good outings on the Game Boy Advance which are well worth playing but the 2D graphics don't have the same level of immersion and long-term appeal as the original. So I've chosen Clonoa 2 Lunatair's Veil on the PlayStation 2. It has the authentic voice found on the first game and fantastic graphics even for today. It also built on the design elements of the first game, making it my pick for number 7. The game is a joy to play with really nice controls and fluid gameplay, and while it may not have the length of a modern sandbox style game, I think the pick up and play nature of the game and its feel good vibe more than make up for it and give it a deserving spot on my list. <laughs> In a total contrast to the last entry, Fragile Dreams Farewell Ruins of the Moon for the Nintendo Wii has a much more melancholic tone. In the spirit of full disclosure, I'm still really early on with this game and don't know where it's going, so why did I place it at number 6? I wanted to include a game with a strong story to follow, and I love the style and feel of this game more than any other game of its type I've played in Namco's library. I play it with Japanese voices and English subtitles because I think it gives it a more authentic feel. The cutscenes and music are wonderfully rich and remind me of the works of Hayao Miyazaki, even down to the iconic chirping of cicadas at night time. I am also fascinated by stories set in post-apocalyptic settings. The idea of living in a world not governed by taxes, bureaucracy and politics, but by survival, exploration and invention. While that may seem all a bit too close to home living on a desert island, the main character's lonely existence may give me something to identify with, and a greater appreciation for my own tropical environment. At number 5 we have the world's most famous beagle flying a World War 1 Sopwith Camel. That's really all the justification needed for this entry. I was never a big fan of flight simulators because I generally find them too complicated for my tastes, but I love the idea of flying a plane and shooting down bad guys. Snoopy vs the Red Baron on the PlayStation 2 is as near to a simulation as I want to get. It's free roaming and I can lock on to targets and launch missiles at them. It has a great theme and the cartoony graphics look friendly and the gameplay is great fun. Similarly to Clonoa, I can play the story through as a cohesive experience or just dip back in and out when I feel like flying around and blasting things. For some reason, this was tragically never released in Europe and while the PSP version is region free, it's hard to find and very expensive. Maybe it's because Snoopy recharges his health with root beer and they were concerned that non-US countries would mistakenly think he was advocating binging on alcohol. Okay, that's enough of the nice stuff, let's get violent. Scrolling beat-em-up games like Final Fight and Streets of Rage were a major part of my childhood and probably my favourite video game genre. They're getting rarer these days, but Urban Rain, a PlayStation 2 exclusive, is a great example. Just 
bashing your way through hordes of fodder is always fun and therapeutic for taking out your stress and aggression on, but this game has a wide variety of moves and a complex combat system that takes time to master. The game is steeped in street gang culture, and you take on the role of the suitably macho sounding Brad Hawk as he whacks his way through hordes of hoodlums. There's also a plethora of weapons and characters to choose from, including guest appearances by Paul Phoenix and Martial Law from the Tekken games. When the original Star Fox, known as Star Wing in the UK for stupid reasons, was released, it was a groundbreaking game that looked amazing back then. But Star Fox Assault on the Nintendo GameCube is light years ahead in terms of graphics, sound and presentation. It may seem surprising to see what could be considered a Nintendo game on this list. Many people know that Star Fox Adventures was an original IP that Rare were asked to repurpose into a Star Fox game, but may be unaware that the follow-up, which returned Star Fox to its roots was developed by Namco. This was originally designed to be an arcade machine, and you could really feel that from the gameplay. On paper, this entry may seem too similar to Snoopy vs the Red Baron, but this is much more of a glorified rail shooter than anything like a real flight simulator. It also has variety with run around and shoot things levels, as well as ground vehicle combat. <laughs> When trying to choose which fighting game I was going to include, my first thought was a tie between my absolute all-time favourites Tekken 2 and Tekken 3 on the original PlayStation. But Tekken Tag Tournament 2 features every Tekken character ever, and the graphics have obviously improved a ton over two generations of consoles. So now I can play as my favourite character of the whole franchise, Armour King, along with the whole cast of Tekken 3 and beyond. There is a reason that the Tekken games are arguably the greatest 3D fighting series of all time. It's easy to pick up and play and can work as a simple button masher, but it takes a lifetime to master. And with such a colossal roster, there's plenty to keep me involved for a very long time. It's a shame that I didn't get room for its brother Soul Calibur on this list, but in Europe we got Fighting Edition, a compilation of Tekken 6, Soul Calibur 5 and Tekken Tag Tournament 2 on one disc. If that were allowed, I would obviously take that instead. If Fighting Edition was controversial, this may seem like outright cheating, but I couldn't really justify anything else than Namco Museum Virtual Arcade for the Xbox 360. It is a single disc and all the games were developed by Namco. I didn't want to fall into the trap of quantity over quality, but there is so much variety here that I can't imagine anything else at the number one spot. All the games shown in the intro to this video can be found here, including the underappreciated Grobda and Metro Cross, called Retro Cross in Europe for some reason, as well as many others. My favourites are Galaga Legions, which takes the original game to new levels of crazy on-screen madness, Bosconian, which is my absolute favourite early 80s space shooter, Rolling Thunder, which was a great looking game at the time, and an early example of the scrolling run and gun style. And finally, Pac-Man Championship Edition, which improves over the original a thousandfold in my opinion. Having 34 games to choose from is a no-brainer for being stuck on a desert island, even though many of them are variations of each other. It was just a shame they couldn't squeeze a few more on, particularly Pac-Land, which was one of my all-time favourites. If you can't bear the fact that I've included a compilation here, you can call Splatterhouse for the Xbox 360 number 7 and bump everything up a place. It has a hard difficulty level and some ridiculously over-the-top violence and gore. Plus, look at that outfit and physique and tell me it isn't John Cena behind that mask. It even includes the original Splatterhouse arcade game as well as Splatterhouse 2 and 3 for the Sega Mega Drive as unlockable extras. If you made it this far, then cheers for the support. I have dozens of videos planned and will try to get them out at a reasonable rate. Please share, like and subscribe. You can follow me as StreakyG on Twitter and StreakyGeek on Facebook, Instagram, Twitch and Patreon. So that's a wrap and stay groovy.